I can't ignore the reality that I see in my community. It's definitely a struggle in the city of Baltimore, no doubt about it. How would I describe Rockingham to a stranger? Basically a little town that, uh, that was at one time that's now seems like it's on life support and we're barely hanging on. My name's Nick Murphy. My name is Matt Presbury. I'm a paraeducator and I live in Baltimore City. I live in Rockingham, North Carolina and I'm an auto mechanic and business owner. We were a meal town 100 years ago. We had like mom and pop stores. We had a real main street. It was a thriving place. As a child, like everything, it's exciting you and being able to go down the harbor as a child and the way it was before when you could stick a cup in the water and catch crabs. and All the shops were full on Main Street. The, uh, it was bumper to bumper traffic. Uh, it seemed like you could quit a job on Friday and find another one Monday. And you can go to KFC and get a chicken little for 49 cents and that's like the highlight of your life, you know? And then you get older and it's hard to deny that things are definitely different than they were before. It seems like we're on a downward spiral at this point. We've, uh, we've lost all of our textiles now. And um, like I said, we're, just, we're a meal town with no textiles. So we basically have become a uh, welfare town. In Baltimore, we have pockets of extreme poverty and violence. Well, that sparked new unrest. We have a lot of resources which have been taken away from us, a lot of boarded up houses and blight across the board. We are back now with a deep dive into one of the most serious crises facing people in this country, overdoses. The opioid problem, the appeal problem, that, that's, that's what we're facing right now. I don't think you can find anybody who's not been affected in one way or the other by the drug problem. A lot of the people I talk to, they all uh, kind of depressed about the way things have changed in the town. It's a feeling like we are being forgotten, we are being ignored. I think we've pretty much been left hang out to dry. I think if it wasn't for subsidies and all, it'd be even worse. That leads to a sense of apathy where people feel like, well, if there's no hope, then there's no reason I should care. There's no reason I should try. You're losing your jobs. You're losing your income. You're losing your factories. They're going to China. They're going to Mexico. What were my thoughts when I heard Trump talking about rural America? The drug problem, the, the welfare, the, that uh, somebody finally is gonna recognize us after all this time. As you look at the rural areas, and these areas are also downtrodden, they're poor people, but the attention is being paid to them, that the attention wasn't paid to people in, in inner cities when we were going through drug crises. It's sort of a slap in the face to be a person who knows people who have suffered, who lived in neighborhoods who have suffered, and who sees suffering still to this day, and understand that Basically, we've gotten a, a, a middle finger where other people have gotten a hand reached out to them to, to help them up. I think there might be some people saying, okay, now it's affecting the white neighborhoods, now we're gonna do something about it, but I, I really don't feel like that's the issue at all. Uh, a lot of our politicians like to keep the can down the road, so to speak, but I think, uh, I think it's come to a head. We can't push it off anymore. In a way, there will always be winners and losers. You know, like those saying goes on is strong will survive. And by that I mean, in the rural areas, the likelihood is that the solution is helping the people who are already there. In the inner cities, the solution is pushing the people out who are there and bringing in people who can make it better. Gentrification has come in and really pushed people out, but that doesn't mean that there really has to be an us versus them mentality where you say you only do for the inner city so you only do for farmers a lot of us have common ground that we don't even realize we don't understand whether it's races or or backgrounds and i think it's by design they, they want us in fighting they, they want us fighting with our neighbor when we don't see that we have a common enemy we have common goals and we have a common enemy this is supposedly the land of milk and honey and the land where dreams come true where just anything is possible. But the people, for as much as we do, we can't necessarily do it alone. We need government, but we need government that's actually for us and is, is, is by us. This is where I'm from, 38 years. This is where I was born. Sowed roots here and uh, that are too deep and I've, I've gone too far to, to turn back at this point. You know, we're gonna survive. We, we will prevail.